Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the offlane tier list for patch 7.31D, and as always, just like in the other videos I said earlier that I'm going to be making a video for each role, so look forward to the support videos in the next couple days. And just like the other videos, I get my statistics primarily from Dota2ProTracker.com. I also look at the trends tab here in the client, you know, same thing with Dota, Buff, and other websites statistics on the pick rates win rates all those kinds of things and i also look at dpc games you know the pick rates win rates ban rates all that kind of stuff in pro matches as well and then i mainly base this on like you know pub matches it's kind of a pub tier list mainly based off high mmr but i kind of just mix my own opinion in there for like all mmrs just a general tier list what i'm feeling what i'm getting the sense from multiple people and multiple different uh statistics and sources so that's how I arrive at this list, and without further ado, let's just jump into the S tier. So the S tier hero, the first one is Beastmaster, and it just seems like pretty much every patch in Dota can be defined in basically one of two ways. Either it's a Beastmaster patch or it's not. In a similar vein, in the last two videos, I kind of said it's either an Alchemist patch or it's not, and the difference is Beastmaster is always pretty good, but some patches, like this patch, Beastmaster is just... OP and honestly this hero seems OP more often than not to be honest it's just very hard to like nerf this hero consistently into the ground like make it absolutely terrible because you're always going to be able to dominate in the lanes with the nature of your build the nature of the pushing power that you have with these summons and then you're always going to have this single target BKB piercing stun that's always going to be good well into the late game and it's just one of these heroes that can dominate the game can take over the map and always has scaling potential into the late game so it's one of these heroes that I think is better at higher MMRs. You're not going to have as much success with it at lower MMRs if you're not able to play with your team, play around pace, all these kinds of things. But the real reason that I think this hero is good right now is because of the pace of the game. Uh, the pace that it's currently at is very high tempo. You see people, you know, trying to invade Alchemist, trying to push the game very quickly with heroes like Ursa, with heroes like Bristleback, uh, Jug, these heroes in games because if an alchemist is in there or some other hero that wants to just you know if you just let them farm if you let the alchemist farm for 20 minutes he's going to come out of the jungle and have four items and just dominate the game so you just can't let that happen so you need to push tempo you need to pick up the pace and beastmaster is a great hero doing that you can take towers like tier one towers at five minutes the first catapult with this hero if you have a good lane so it's just beastmaster doing beastmaster things the typical beastmaster stuff but then the next hero the other s tier hero is going to be dawnbreaker dawnbreaker is just an absolutely insane hero right now since dawnbreaker and marcy have been introduced into captain's mode just like i talked about in the uh, last two videos for the carry and mid tier list this hero has seen play in pretty much every single position i would say off lane is the most popular and the best position um, right up there with carry and then obviously it's been played in the support role a lot and as off lane i think this hero is just really really good you offer pretty much a little bit of everything. You have mobility, you have stun, you have damage over time, good ways to farm, you have some heal, you have obviously this global um, ultimate that is a really, really good teamfight ultimate. And yeah, it just offers a little bit of everything. And then with the buffs that this hero has had, you also scale pretty well with damage. Like you're probably not going to be building a ton of damage items. Like you're not going to be going the carry build where you just go uh, Desolator AC. But you can still go some damage items. You can still do a lot of damage. You still have that built-in BKB with the shard. You still have all these things that allow you to do a lot in team fights. So, although I think, you know, the carry version of this hero is becoming more popular, offlane is probably the default version. It's very, very good right up there with Beastmaster. And that is the S tier. It's really not flashy, really not all that, you know, great. It's not like super fun. It's just you have your classic Beastmaster and then you have this new hero Dawnbreaker, which obviously is not new overall, but just reintroduce. People are figuring out how it's good and it's a very, very good offlane hero. It just, it doesn't lose lanes usually. I mean, it's very good in lane. It's very good in every stage of the game. It has a little bit of everything in its kit. And then we can move on to the A tier. The A tier is kind of defined by these weird sort of very aggressive offensive like heroes so one of the things that's come into the meta and one of the reasons that the meta has changed so much is a little bit the patch like the patch 7.31d did change some things um specifically i think the biggest change is that alchemist is now good but the other thing that happened is that uh people have seen amar as an offlaner and some of these other offlaners play really really greedy styles viper um timbersaw all these kinds of heroes 
that are pretty much carries from the offlane. Like even even uh, Razor here. And so what's happening is you're getting a lot of these heroes in the offlane that play like carries, or they have very big impact, they farm a lot, and they really just are this other core. They don't need to sacrifice as much. And so that's what you're seeing here in this, like, A-tier list, is you just have Timbersaw, which is a very, very good Amar hero, basically, that just seems like to stick in the meta no matter how much it's nerfed. It's been nerfed, I think, a few times over the last, like, six months, and everyone thinks, ah, maybe this, this hero's dead now, but it just pops back because it's always going to have a good laning stage, you know, as long as you don't get completely bullied in the first two levels or first three levels, you're just going to have a good laning stage almost all the time. You can cut creeps, you can do all these kinds of things to, you know, make your laning stage better for yourself. And then once that happens, once you get out of the laning stage and you're good, you're going to just going to take towers, you're going to be an unkillable beast. And now this hero scales well into the late game as well with all this damage, ags, the shard, all these kinds of things that it has at its disposal to do tons of damage. It's a very good scaling hero. Same thing with Lycan. I mean, Lycan's not as good as, Be as Beastmaster, but it's a very similar hero. It just honestly is more of a carry hero than the Beastmaster. It doesn't have as much control, uh, as much team fight kind of abilities in that way, but it has an ultimate. You can run down supports, just a menace in fights, and it pushes really fast. So it just does typical Lycan things, but it's very good in this patch because um, it's just, like I said, it's it's kind of a creep patch. It's definitely possible to be very good with that. And then Enigma, even though Enigma got nerfed a little bit, I believe, um, since the last major because it was very good in that major, it's still viable. It's still very, very good. It still is able to be an offlaner. You know, you're always going to be able to not deny that XP. You're always going to be able to get your farm almost all the time. Get be greedy. And then Black Hole, you can never count out Black Hole. That, you know, Blink, uh, BKB, Lincoln's, Refresher, you know, you can go this every game double black hole and then if you do get a shard from Roche like you triple black hole it's just absolutely insane like you're never going to be able to count that out the aggression of Viper just you know you can't count that out either this is almost like a carry from the offlane similar kind of thing then you have Pudge Pudge is the hero of the patch I'm probably rating him a little bit higher than he should be maybe you know in terms of actually how good he is but he's actually good he's actually viable He's in all three core lists, and he's very, very good. And so I'm putting him up here in A because he's actually legitimate. He can be a good offlane. I think maybe having him in A tier in offlane is actually the only thing that's kind of weird. I don't know that he's actually as good of an offlane. He's almost more good, more of a um, very good mid and carry hero, weirdly enough. But he's still very viable as, offlane, as an offlaner, and you can snowball with this hero like crazy. Uh, and then we have Visage, which is kind of a cheese pick, but it's very good if you know how to play Visage. It kind of does all the similar Visage stuff. So these are all like kind of weird picks here in the A tier, um, but they're they are good. I mean, they will dominate games if you know how to play them and if you can make them work in the off lane. And then we have B tier, and this B tier is more of your traditional off laners. These are kind of off laners that either were good in the past, or you know, are your traditional off laners that are still good, um, or are kind of your carry off laners that just aren't as good as these other kind of carry off laners up here. So we have Razor's a very good example of that. He's good, but he's just not as good as the in the off lane as some other roles, and he just isn't you know an A tier hero. He's just a little bit worse, but still viable. And then the surprising one probably is Alchemist. Alchemist has become an off lane hero. I played a couple games against it, and it's actually pretty strong. Usually because people take um, they take the stun level one or maybe level two. They might even skip Grievel's Greed from the first couple levels and get it only on level like three or something. Get Acid Spray, get the stun, and it's just actually impossible to lane against this guy. Like, he doesn't even need Soul Ring that early, and he can just spam these spells, relatively low mana cost, you're stunning constantly, and then if you have a partner in the lane, like a forward position that has a stun as well, you just put down the uh, you put down the Acid Spray, you have a stun from the Unstable Concoction, you have your stun from your, uh, your ally there, and you could just destroy people in the first few levels. This hero is so, so strong at laning now compared to what it used to be, and it's becoming a viable offlaner because if you can get away with having this hero in the offlane, you can get your farm for the first 10, 12 minutes, especially even in lower MMRs, you're going to be able to get your Radiance at a good timing and then just like maybe even get Radiance then into Blink, keep farming, but then have insane impact in the fights and actually be like a legit hero. Like, you could probably get Radiance Blink timing at the timing of some other hero's blinks that, like, if they have a bad lane, like, if you have an Axe or a Sand King or some hero that usually buys blink, you could probably get a blink timing that's, you know, not as good, but just barely as good because all you do is Soul Ring right into Radiance and then the blink, like, and then BKB after that. You're just going to be another core. You're going to be another carry from the offlane. You're really going to have similar kind of impact. Like, you totally can do that. So, anyway, that's the Alchemist explanation. It's becoming more popular. We'll see if it's just a fad, if it falls off, or if it becomes even better. We'll see if that happens. Then CK 
It was kind of the hero of the patch a few patches ago. Has just gotten nerfed a little bit, so it's just fallen off, but it's still good. You can still pick it. I don't see it as much, but it's still viable for sure. Then Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is kind of on the upswing. This hero's decent overall. It is kind of like carry from the off lane. We're kind of seeing that as obviously a trend. It's just, you know, there are weaknesses of this hero. It's, you know, there, you can get bullied out of lane potentially against certain matchups. You also don't have great matchups into the mid and late game sometimes. Uh, it's kind of an awkward hero. Obviously, it doesn't have a stun. It does have control, but it's like weird. Uh, so it's at the B tier right now, but I think look for into the future if they change the ags, if they maybe buff the hero a little bit more, it can become like a legitimate carry, a legitimate offlaner into the future. Then we have Bristleback. Bristleback was a very good carry. I think it's kind of transitioned more to a carry because you really want to get these items. You're not really playing as much from the offlane role as like a tank where you just buy like tanky items and become unkillable and hard to deal with because I think people are getting more and more used to just dealing with that in general, like just ignoring you and kind of just playing around that. Um, so now what you really want to be doing is building ags and going for the offensive capabilities. And you can still still do that from the offlane. It's just kind of better if you do that from the carry position because, you know, you're going to be able to have that space to get the farm that you need to do damage, you know, 15, 20 minutes into the game where offlane bristleback, you kind of have more jobs to do. You have towers to defend, towers to push, and you can totally get your farm and be a carry as well, but you just have a little bit of a different job. So you're still good. You're still a classic offlaner, but just not the best. Same thing with Night Stalker. It was really good last patch um, in, at the Major. Just a little bit worse now, but still not to be counted out. You can still totally play Night Stalker, and I think people are underestimating the shard on this hero still. I think it's still kind of broken. They haven't really touched it too much, I don't believe, and uh, if they even did at all. And it's still, I think, very good. I think it actually might be a little bit underrated. I think people are still looking past this hero. Look for this hero to potentially be back in the Major in a big way. I honestly think it could just be a sleeper pick in some ways. Then we have Bat Rider. This here is more of a mid. It's very good as a mid, but you can still get away with it in the offlane. It's still viable to be picked there. Um, it's probably more of a high MMR hero than it is, you know, lower MMR, similar to the Bat mid. So it's just, it just seems like Bat offlane is always like a step below the Bat mid. It just seems like Bat is back to being more of a mid hero, even though for a long time it was an offlane hero. But it's just, it just, the way this hero has changed, it seems like more of a mid now. And then Dragon Knight, kind of the opposite of Bat. It seems like this hero is more of an offlaner than it. You know, it, it just, it was mid for a long time. Now it's kind of transitioned to an offlane. This is really where it seems to shine still. Um, you can still play it mid, but I think it still is an offlaner. It's just not as good as it once was. It was very, very good a couple patches ago with the fireball buff and all that kind of stuff. Then it's gotten some consistent nerfs. And now it just, it does the normal things that Dragonite does. Still has a good stun. Still can go blink BKB into Ags and really have insane impact in the game. You still have a good landing stage. All these um, typical Dragon Knight things that you're going to be doing. But... You know, it's just not as good as it once was. Still viable, but not as good. And then C tier here. When we move into the C tier, this is, I think, where you get all of your, not all of them, um, but a lot of your old, traditional, were good for a long time in the past offlaners. So you have Mars. Been good for so, so long. I think finally we found the tipping point where Mars is just not as good as it used to be. And it's just, you know, it's been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And it wasn't falling off. I think now, finally... It's just not where it was before, so it's not as viable. Um, it, it seems like even though it's always been picked in the pros, the pub win rate was just kind of like tanking into like the 40 percentiles, you know, low 40s now probably, I think. And it was still getting picked in the pros, and now it's just kind of bad even in pubs and not being picked in the pros as much. But it's still kind of viable. Like this hero's kit is just always going to be good. Same thing with Sand King. Sand King was very, very good. I think it's still good. It has a decent kit, but just overall it's just not as good as it was. You know, numbers are nerfed all around. It's just not as good. Same thing with Slardar. Well, I don't think Slardar actually was nerfed, but it just hasn't... It's kind of on the upswing, but it hasn't hit the peak yet. It hasn't really become viable. It hasn't really been the time for the Slardar, um, this Slardar hero to shine. I think it's actually transitioning somewhat more into a carry. Uh, it, was, it was on the carry tier list. We'll see if that becomes more of the trend of this hero, because, you know, sometimes heroes just switch roles based on what's happening in the in the meta, in the game, these kinds of things. You know, we'll see what happens with Slardar, but right now, he just is an okay offlaner. Doom seems to be just okay as well. Uh, I see some people playing it, like, I think Entity is playing it carry and stuff. It just, it, it can be... It's kind of like Enigma where you can always put a Doom into a lineup and try to figure out where to put it, whether it's three, whether it's four, whether it's carry, you know, mid even. Like, a Doom is always going to be viable in a similar way to Enigma, but right now it's just not great as an offlane. It's not the best. You would all like to have other ones. Nature's Prophet, pretty good, but I think it's just, it's not the best. Um, you know, Nature's Prophet still has 
those things that make it broken with leash talents and all that kind of stuff, but it's not, it's just not as good. And I think you have to be a good nature's profit player. You're kind of playing as a carry from the off lane, which is still good. i um, still viable. Uh, it's just not as good of a carry as some other ones. It just depends. I just don't see it being as popular. We'll see if maybe I'm wrong and it should be a little bit higher into the future. I think it could have higher um, upside in a few weeks or in the major, but we'll see. Then Kunkka. Kunkka's just okay right now. Not as great as an offlaner. Maybe more of a mid, but just not really super good in the offlane because, you know, your spells only do so much and then eventually they fall off and you want to be scaling with damage, but from the offlane you don't really do that. P Pangolier seems to be more of a mid recently, not as much of an offlaner. You just... Your laning stage was very good for a while when they gave when they switched up how the slow and stuff worked, um, because you would just you know you would just skill your shield crash, but it's just not. I just feel like it's not very good laning, and you can't really afford to have a very bad off laner in the laning stage. These patches, Centaur kind of on the upswing is okay. You know, I think you can always pick it in your pubs. He's never going to be like horrible, but he's just not great. Marcy can be played from the offlane, is okay, is not the worst, but it's more of a support these days, kind of with the Dawnbreaker thing, she's been introduced and can play almost every role, but this this here is just more of a support, it seems. It, it, it's its core role is more of carry, I think, and then um, it, it can be played in the offlane, but it seems to be more of a support. Tusk as well seems to be more of a support, but it is kind of on the ups swing. It's on the uptrend. I think people are playing this offlane. You're using the kick build with the ags to really put people out of position. I've even seen like Mason play at carry. So even though I have it in C tier here and the statistics bear this out as not being that great, uh, look for it to be on the upswing. Look for it to be B, potentially even A tier if uh, if pro players start you know realizing this tier hero is good, realizing that the ags build is good and start picking that in pro games and people start learning how to win with that hero. And then we have D tier here. We have Tide. He's Almost always going to be a decent pro hero, but just in pubs, it's just not happening. He's just not great right now. It just feels like he's a ravage bot, honestly. And you can still get away with Tide. He's still classic, but it's not great. Necro's been nerfed a bit. Seems like a decent offlaner. I mean, you can get away with picking this hero, but just not great. Same thing with DP. It's just ever since the change to the ultimate where it does, does like half tower damage from what it did, basically they reverted it back to what it was supposed to do, and then it kind of fell off. Um, Spirit Breaker seems to be dead ever since, you know, they nerfed him back before. He was, like, broken, like, six months ago or whenever it was. And now he's just kind of dead. Uh, he's viable, I guess, but he's kind of dead. Look at Brewmaster to be on the upswing a little bit. I see some people trying to play him, but I, I think every patch they see, like, oh, is Brewmaster broken? They try to play him, and then it just never comes to fruition. Underlord I put down here because the statistics bear this out. I, I don't really know that this was here was changed all that much to be that much worse we saw him a lot in the meta in the last major i can't remember maybe i'm just misremembering that he wasn't nerfed that much but it just for whatever reason the statistics bear this out i think it's mainly because the thing that makes this hero strong is that you can play around his new ultimate in a very interesting way and this is always going to be something i think that is viable in the pro scene but it just doesn't work very well in pubs like you know, his ultimate even before the change was hard to make work in pubs, and now I think it's it's better, the ultimate is better, but it's almost like worse in pubs, because it's like harder to coordinate, like you have to coordinate with your team, and all those kinds of things just make it way worse. So that, that's, I think, why the statistics are so bad, and why it is down here. And it's not like PL and some of these other heroes that this hero's good against are like, I mean, PL's okay, but he's not like the broken hero of the patch, so it doesn't make Underlord all that much more valuable. Legion was uh, kind of broken six months or so ago when, you know, the shard and everything made this hero really good, and it's just, I don't, I don't think it's been good ever since those nerfs. Just okay. I mean, you can still stomp games with it, but this hero's good against some heroes like Anti-Mage, like Slark. Some of these heroes, and those heroes just suck right now, so it's just not that good. Magnus has been dead ever since TI. They just kind of nerfed it, never really have been buffing this hero enough to give it any real play. Um, especially from the offlane, it's very weak. You're just mainly buffing your team up and just trying to get blink RPs and blink horn tosses, and that's still viable. It's just not nearly as good, and you don't really want to give the enemy... Uh, a free lane, which Magnus really will. It just doesn't have the best laning presence. Axe, Axe just seems to be a bad hero for some reason, even though he is kind of on the upswing. I feel like he has this... I mean, he was good a year ago when he had that kind of... Uh, I think it was the Shard Manta build. They took that away from him, and it seems like he's dead, but I, I feel like Axe is kind of just sitting in the wings, just waiting for somebody to realize that he's good. Right now, he has a bad win rate. He just isn't doing great. I just... I feel like there's potential here. I feel like there's something that can happen with Axe and just nobody's exploring it or something because it just doesn't seem like he should be D tier, but everything that I'm seeing says that he's D tier, so that's why I'm putting him here. 
Venge, I hate Venge offlane. I always have. I just don't think it's good. This is heroes of support. Bounty offlane. Uh, Bounty's such a weird hero. I enjoy the hero. It's just a weird hero. It, it, I can't explain it. I mean, it's like as a support, he seems useless because he doesn't have stuns. And it's like, but as offlane, he also seems useless because he's not very tanky. He also doesn't have stuns, so it's like. I mean, is this hero a carry? But, like, I don't know. He's such a weird hero. He's at a weird spot. I enjoy him, but he's just not good. Venomancer, also not great. I mean, you can make it work. He he does a lot of damage, but, again, it's a very specific hero with, you know, very specific timings, very specific way of playing, and against the wrong matchups, you can just get countered. And then, finally, we have F-Tier. We have Darkseer, which, I mean, if you guys know me, maybe some people won't like this, but I hate Darkseer. I think he's a terrible hero. I think he's absolutely terrible. Obviously, I know Koikva and some other players play this hero and they make it look good and I think they can because they're you know 10k 12k whatever it is MMR they're insane but I just think nobody under like 6 7k should play this hero it literally just gives the enemy a free lane and it is only good against some matchups it's just it's one of these heroes no one should play and honestly I think the only reason why people pick this hero is because they <laughs> they just want to put the ion sh- they want to ion shell the wave they just want to like ion shell the wave and then just walk away and not have to lane they don't want to learn how to play dota they don't actually want to be good at dota they just ion shell the wave and then be like I cast ultimate in fights that's all they want to do and it's just it's not good like stop playing this hero uh, it's actually better than F but I'm putting it in F from now on this hero is going to be an F unless they do something to make it like way better it's an F and I'm sorry guys it's an F OD, F, just stop. Don't pick OD offlane. Stop it. Stop it. If I see you pick OD offlane, I'm banning you from, I don't I, well, if I have the power to ban you from something, I'm going to ban you from that thing if you you ever pick OD offlane. Broodmother offlane, not good right now. It's been more of a mid, I feel like, recently, but just offlane, nah. Nah, 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 nah. And then Primal Beast nerfed into the ground. I don't think Primal Beast is in any other tier list because... He's mainly kind of an offlane hero. I mean, I guess he could be in the supports. I don't know if he was in there. I don't know if I put him in there. But uh, this hero just got nerfed into the ground. It's just dead. I mean, it's just a dead hero now. So, I mean, maybe it'll be come back into some other role, and I will put it there. Maybe it's in the support list. I don't even remember. But it's just a dead hero. They nerfed into Oblivion. It's terrible now. Um, it was super OP, played in, like, every role, and now it's just gone. I think that's a little bit harsh. I actually don't think it's F tier. I think it might be D or C, but it just nobody's playing this, and it just has a terrible win right now. So... That's Primal Beast, that's the F tier, and that is the offlane tier list for patch 7.31D. As always, guys, like the video, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this and you want to see more into the future. Let me know in the comments where you think, you know, certain people should be. Do you Are you very mad about my Darkseer take? Anybody in the Discord knows about my Darkseer take, pretty much, or anybody who's ever watched one of my streams from a few months ago knows about my Darkseer take. But in any case, let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, join the Discord if you haven't already. Go to my Patreon if you want coaching, or if you just want to see more videos like this into the future, consider supporting me there. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.